everybody. Good morning. It is a happy, happy day because the sun is out. The sky is blue. Did you notice the sky is blue? Oh, I did. It's been a while you since I've been out You have a shirt that matches the sky Yes, today. I do. I love yes. my blue shirts. That's yes. my favorite color. Now, you traveled a little bit this weekend, and we're going to talk about that. Yes. We're going yes. to talk about things that are happening in the economy. We're going to talk about the fact that that dreaded old groundhog did not see a shadow. <laughs> so spring is going to be early, and we're excited about that. I miss that. Oh my gosh, we just need a lot of happiness in the world. And um, you went to an event that, is it bringing some good news maybe? Oh, I was, I was so ridiculously encouraged. So I spent the weekend. We need encouragement right yeah, now. So, yeah, so um, I got invited by, by uh, someone that's associated with the organization and, and the individual that's at Peak Prosperity that that I'm on his show from time to time right. is a board member of the FLCCC. Tell us what it so, stands for. So that it started out as the Frontline COVID Critical Care mm -hmm. um, Alliance. And of course, is, since COVID is kind of more behind us at this point, they have expanded into, you know, really trying to create, uh, bring honesty back into the uh, healthcare system. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna make yeah. me laugh now. <laughs> Did you know, you know, here's one thing that's interesting. Oh, that's did, so funny. did you know that the U.S. Mm -hmm. is one of, uh, one of the only countries in the world that allows pharmaceutical companies to advertise uh, in our media? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Because I'm guilty of this. I'll be sitting there late at night watching Fox News and I'll see this commercial and I'll think that might help. And then I'll get doctors to say, give you a sample of it. Then you read the cautions on the label. Yeah. <laughs> and then you put it in the trash and you forget about it. Yeah, we are victims of, why well, bet that'd help me. Yeah, Why well, that are. might change my life. Well, we I are. might live longer. We are. Well, I might die taking it too. Well, I mean, think about it. If, if they were to advertise alcohol to, sure. you know, teenagers, yeah. is that going to does. Alcohol the does make you feel better for a short period of time. Yeah. Two drinks and you're happy and giddy and all that. Three drinks and I'm going to whoop you <laughs> with a frying pan. So come on, guys. Yeah. If they advertised alcohol, well, cigarettes. Remember right. when so they advertised cigarettes? They do. Makes you feel they so did. good. Yeah. yeah. Just make, opens your lung expansion. Makes doctors <laughs> were advertising cigarettes. Come on, guys. Yes. Yes. It so, happened. Yeah. So when, in when, my lifetime. When you think about that, but it's more than that as well. Okay. You think about how podcasts, how local shows like this are, are really, and, and there's such a lack of trust in the mainstream media. I mean, one, that's one thing that COVID did is, you know, it either indoctrinated you to believe everything mm -hmm. that, that the mainstream media says, but for the large majority of Americans, it's like, oh, no, hey, this, this doesn't Don't make sense. Don't believe any right? of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but more than just the advertising from the pharmaceutical side, the influence that that gives over the media. And, and, and when you've got the media, the mainstream media, that's kind of a dying industry at this point, self-inflicted wound because there's just, they don't tell the truth anymore, right. Right? right? And it's clear as day that they're beholden to their advertisers and the manipulation techniques, you know, they're, they're just trying to stay in business. So. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they go through and basically, you know, it was a, the conference started Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I, I, I was ridiculously encouraged. And here's the reason why. They brought facts out, okay? They brought facts and studies free from the, the influence of Somebody telling of you what to pharmaceuticals. Say. And here's yeah. one of the things they taught, you know, that was, that was clear to me that, that you can see. There's been a capture that's taken place um, in the elite sectors away from the average individual, okay? So uh, at, at the highest levels, because really if you, wanna, if you wanna influence a major organization, it's, it's not the rank and file individuals. The rank and file individuals are typically like you and I. They're, they're average Americans, they mm -hmm. care about their, their friends, their family, they wanna make a difference in, in the lives of the people that they serve. But then you've got these power hungry individuals you know that if that that if they we all know if they them. surround themselves, they'll do anything to climb to the top of that ladder because yep. it's not about helping people; it's about power, it's about influence, it's about making money, right? So the argument is is at the very top where some of the more important decisions are made, there's a level of corruption, and, and, and we all know that, right? I mean, unless you're totally, totally off the planet, you know that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, and two, it, it, I still remember the first time I read the Bible front to back, right? 
I was like, you know, God blesses the Israelites and those who follow him and, and they prosper and then, and then, you know, they, they stop doing the things that made them prosper. They lose their integrity. Corruption enters the process. Mm -hmm. And then you have collapse, right? And it's and just kind of and greed over and, greed and over and, and over and over. And I'm like, you know, golly, these Israelites, they're not very wise people. And then you realize when you get a little bit older and, and wisdom is earned, right? You look back and realize that's human nature. So we're just at a, we're at a point. And see, here's the thing, you know, the, Jordan Peterson makes the comment that weak men are dangerous. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with oh, that? Oh, I agree. And you know where I stand with a vice presidential candidate for anybody. We are headed to third world war. Choose the strongest. I say go to the military. Do something. Don't choose some beautiful. I, I love Christy Naum. I think she's awesome. Yeah. But I think for vice president, we need strength in a male. I'm sorry. And I know a lot of women are going to be mad at me about that. But I really think we need two strong men in there today because... <clears throat> we don't know what tomorrow will bring. We know assassinations have happened. We know that heart attacks happen. We know, so I say strength in numbers right now. We need that in the White House, strength. We, we do need strength in numbers, and we also need the baby boomer generation. To wake up and smell to, the coffee. To, to wake up. <gasps> wake up and smell the coffee. But, but to really also, you know, fulfill their role as men and salt and light in this world and and make a little bit of sacrifice on the enjoyment of their resting in retirement and and step up to influence mm -hmm. in a good way in a wise way uh, our political leaders and maybe take the opportunity well, i don't know i mean we've had the baby boomer generation in control so i don't know but yeah but to stand up for your beliefs otherwise you're going to leave a country that is far different than what they inherited mm -hmm. as and it and i don't think we're we're past the point of no return, but we're getting close. So, so going back to that weak men, you know, when we think of weak men, we think of weak physically, right? Mm -hmm. But it's weak mentally. Mm -hmm. So a weak man can't control his temper to keep from striking someone that that he can't. And a weak man is like a spoiled little brat. Fourth right? grader. Fourth grader. I want what I want. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to share. I want it all. Yeah. So when you get those at the top, and there's this money and the power. The, a statement was made is they know they're corrupt, right? <laughs> we know that they're corrupt, mm -hmm. and they know that we know that they're corrupt. So yep. it, it's clear to see for people who have the courage to embrace the truth. So what was so encouraging to me is, you know, somebody made the comment that there was around 600 to 700 people that were there. I don't know. I was thinking closer to 900. Mm -hmm. And people are making notes. But what's fascinating is the FLCCC is alliance that's, that's got checks and balances in place to, to bring about the truth, to look at studies. Um, they, and I don't understand this, but medical journals are very important, right? Like one of the doctors was saying, like, I always read the medical journal because a, a good doctor really wants to make a difference in the lives of mm -hmm. their patients. They, they do, like all of our and local doctors. And they assume doctors. if it's written in the medical journal, it's true. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, every one of our local doctors, <laughs> you see the, how hard they work to take care of the individuals, they care. Mm -hmm. But the weak link is what comes down out of those medical journals, right? So if you can capture it and, and you know, not necessarily, and you can drive narrative from that level, this is what they're arguing, I'm, you know, that if you can drive from that level, then you can drive product in the pharmaceuticals. So they showed, study after study after study that talks about Alzheimer's and, and how important lifestyle is and changes. And I mean, they, not only did they have studies, but also um, products that are out there, you know, going back to the horse pace medicine, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that, mm -hmm. that may not necessarily be approved for this, but there's studies that show- Ivermectin? I, yeah, Ivermectin. Yeah. There are studies that show that, that, that these things do more in in not necessarily FDA approved mm -hmm. levels, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was out there for other purposes, kind of to talk about, you know, investments and, and things of that nature, but, but I also sat and enjoyed and fellowshiped, and I was just so encouraged to see people that are inquisitive. Mm -hmm. They're curious, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they're weighing the evidence. They're like, okay, you know, let's not go, you know, orange man bad, and you know, I'm saying that because <laughs> the narrative that they say. <laughs> but the point being is, you know, let's let's have conversation, let's have debate, let's discuss this, let's look at the evidence, let's be objective, and 
and admit when we're wrong and go on elsewhere and it's not necessarily just about profit. So what mm -hmm. got me so excited about the FLCCC Alliance is, is that, that there's this groundswell, right? There's strong men and women who have, have really kind of upended their careers instead of coasting into retirement, mm -hmm. right? They're, they, rec made. they recognize a problem in the system and they're trying to make a difference. So there's two, there, there's two paths that they'll go down. One is try to create an alternative system for, you know, uh, medical journals type, like basically where there's discourse and conversation in between, and then also trying to find good men and women who, who can fix the system with, within, from within. You know, and really in all of our society right now, we see this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, we've, we've got a lot of foolish decisions that we're making and, you know, short term in nature, instant gratification, and, and that, that's the path towards destruction, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you go back to high school athletics, instant gratification is, is I get to play on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Really instant gratification is, is I don't have to work hard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I, I, I get to, you know, be out there. So what we've got to do is work hard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. play hard Friday, <laughs> and work hard to rest on Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, it, it takes that discipline. So I got to tell you, you know, if you're interested in that, if there's, you know, I actually told um, my doctor, I'm getting ready to talk to a doctor because they're going to have another, from what I understand, the next conference is going to be in Atlanta. Oh, wow. Or they're looking in Atlanta or kind of Atlanta, Florida. And I was like, I will sponsor you to go to this. So people don't have to bring armed guards if they're going to have it in Atlanta. I said that, didn't I? And I'll get in so much trouble because <laughs> I Atlanta, actually missed Atlanta that. Atlanta is not the Atlanta that we, that I grew up in. Atlanta is not the town that I loved. Atlanta is not the place. I would park at Mary Max Tea Room and walk to the Fox to go to the theater. Atlanta right. is not what it once was. And um, you know that. I mean, would you send your wife to Atlanta alone to go shopping? Oh, no. 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 I wouldn't send my wife to Marietta alone to go shopping. No way. It's so sad because the places that we love, the things that we recall, that we enjoyed doing, I don't do anymore because I don't feel safe doing it. I'd love to go to the Varsity downtown. That's my favorite Varsity. I'd love to go to the Fox. I'd love to go to Mary Max Tea Room. I ain't I, a going. I, I ain't a going. <laughs> I go to far, I, Varsity. I want my life. <laughs> I go to the Varsity during the day. Yeah, I go to the Varsity I just don't at Town go after Center. Dark. I go to the Varsity at Town Center. But you know the problem is, is that's taking place in every city across the country, I know. And, and it's also and there's no no. We need to stop it. We need to fund the police, not defund the police. We do. We need to tell them, shoot to kill. We need to teach them that if somebody's robbing a bank, do you know the thing they're doing in California? If gangs go in and rob less than $1,000, they don't charge them with anything. Mm -hmm. So you can steal $999 worth a day from each store you go in, and you're not charged with anything. Well, isn't that a great way to raise America? Well, I'm, isn't that a great way to raise America? I met somebody that was from New York at the conference over the weekend. They were just talking about the fact, and I think this was on the news media too, but um, they were talking about the fact that, that gangs are sending members I'm from sure. Florida to uh, New York because you know there's no prosecution for whatever mm -hmm. that number is in New York, for example, and they're stealing mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. they can steal, and then they're taking it down to Florida and selling mm -hmm. it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we've just got a lot of, the Bible says that there's a, a, a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. And I can't remember the, the Proverbs that that's in, but when you think about that, you, you know, it's like, okay, things are tough for people, right? Like their narrative is things are tough. You mm -hmm. know, the poor are really struggling, the homeless are really struggling, so let's soften the consequences for them, right? But what we, really, what we really need to fix in this country, what we really need to fix is bring capitalism back, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because what's taking place is the lobbying power of the big corporations. And, 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 and look, Sherry, I don't, I don't fault the business people, the businessmen and women, from trying to bribe to, um, to expand their empire. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, it, it, it is not Although the that right wasn't thing to the do. way America was built. No. no. 
it's not of integrity, okay? But when you think about, you know, business people get caught up sometimes and nobody wakes up and says, I'm gonna go blow my life up by, by living in sin. It happens one little step at a time, right? Mm -hmm. So- You accidentally so, pad somebody's pockets, accidentally. And then you accidentally pad their pockets again, and then you accidentally pad their pockets again. Yeah. And you, your company grows. It's amazing well, how I mean, that works. It, but it, and it's also a, a grayer line, right? Like you go steal something. We know stealing is wrong. Like, mm -hmm. like stealing. Not is in California, the, it's not. Not if you only steal nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. Stealing is the most selfish thing that somebody can do, and that's why it's so wrong. Because you know, I don't need to work, and I'm going to take from you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so we know that's wrong, but some people are like, they don't see it's bad. It's like, oh, if I give somebody $10,000 to make me a hundred, right? Well, I've helped them and I make money and nobody's hurt. So that's the argument. But my, mm -hmm. my point being is that's what business people do, but we need a check and balance in society. Okay, so what is the check and balance to the tendency of a business owner wanting to do that? You have to have honest, honest politicians who are there to serve the people mm -hmm. and and they need to be above reproach. This isn't an ideal world, but when good men are in charge, it can be an ideal world because they have the strength of their, of their soul, their person, they care enough about the country to say, look, I get the game, I'm not viable, okay? You can't buy me, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. So if, if we were back to capitalism, there would be more opportunity within the inner cities, mm -hmm. okay? There would be more local manufacturing that take place here. There's more, so there's a level of desperation that's taking place across the country in so many areas, which is why the suicide rates are so high, why the addiction rates are so high, because there's just not a massive amount of opportunity. We've been taught this American dream, okay? And for the, for the few of those who have parents that have driven work ethic into their kids, who have expressed the importance of the right education, mm -hmm. okay? Like, if you go get a degree that gives you a license that you can do something in engineering and sciences or something of that nature, that makes sense, you mm -hmm. know, to get into the medical field, but keep your debt level low, get out and be productive. But just to go get a degree for the sake of getting a degree and coming out with 150,000 in student debt. You know, one day we could do a program and I, I can give you a list of 10 kids who I know whose parents are maxed out with credit cards, maxed out with debt, help their children get the most, oh, I'm getting so much trouble, stupid degrees you could ever imagine in something that they will never find a job in that will ever pay their student debt. They chose something that was just absolutely off the wall goofy and their parents allowed them to go to college and signed up for the debt. Right. But, but to be fair, A plumber, okay? a diesel mechanic. Oh, a plumber, yeah. Uh, air conditioning, heat and air, heat and air. Oh, Lord, go get yourself, go to a trade school. Yes. If you've got five kids, you need to send two of them to college. You need to pick the two brilliant ones and send them to college, send the other three, and let them get degrees in something that matters. If your toilet's not working, who are you going to call? A plumber. Um, yeah. You're not going to call I somebody with a degree in writing about the bees on the trees. You're not gonna call that person with that degree. Right. You're gonna call a plumber. Yeah, but And you're now, gonna pay him $300 an hour. Now that person has a role, right? Mm -hmm. The I bees guess. on the trees. That's there, right. there is a That's role right. for that. That's right. But, but a lot of these degrees <coughs> have been easy degrees, mm -hmm. okay? But to be fair, to be fair to the, to the, to the parents, hindsight's always perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. So it shifted really, uh, really quickly under the surface and then people just didn't adapt quick enough because their eyes are on something else. They're not pondering with fear and trembling the steps of their feet and the path that they're taking, right? When you went to college, what did it cost you a year? I had no clue. Maybe 40,000? Oh, no, 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 no. It wasn't that much okay. at all. I mean, like, like. Because it, now it's like triple that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's like, it's, it's like the cost of living. But when we, we don't I mean, hold like these colleges accountable, because yeah. we see them paying uh, people without pay, paying people who uh, commit crimes of plagiarism, six hundred thousand a year. Oh, yeah, you know, know. <clears throat> so that was one of the things that they talked about there too. Yeah, is just there's the plagiarism some problems within the system, and you know, and here's the thing: when the head of the organization's uh, uh, cheating, how can you demand the the kids to cheat? It's so your children. There is something. Follow about, by example. Of the authority, right? Follow by example. Yeah, so 
The thing is, as hindsight, we can see that, you know, used to it was just, just get a college degree because everything, you needed a college degree to come mm -hmm. in. Well, in New York now, they're doing away with the requirements for college degrees to be able to help uh, allow people to get in and fill some of these jobs because the college degrees don't really make a difference mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. like with my three kids, of course, Will, bless him. Oh, He's got yes. chemistry this semester. Oh gosh! And oh he had, gosh! He pretty much. You know, had, my average in basic science was so low. <laughs> He's had all A's and one B, and I'm that like, kid. I'm like, so how bad is it, buddy? He's like, it's rough, bad. Oh, this gosh. is rough. But oh, he's God. like, I went and got me a tutor yesterday because he did because he had all A's and one B from summer to fall. He didn't, you know, he wasn't required to have a tutor. He's like, I, I need a tutor. I said, so you're stressing to get good grades? He's yeah. like, I'm, I'm stressing. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not stressing to get good grades. I'm stressing to get out of this one by the skin of my wow. teeth. Wow, wow. So you know, he's at he's at Tech. That's where he wanted to go. Katie went to North Georgia and got a degree in marketing, and because she wanted to be in the medical sales type field and mm -hmm. you got to have a degree to be able to get into that type of sales. So in North Georgia was perfect because it gave her a great education, got in sales competition, she's off to the races. Now Kel, college wasn't for him. I always knew he was smart, mm -hmm. but college wasn't for him, but he's, he got into construction. So it's like I told him, I said, all right, get every certificate you can get, get every license before you have a family. Right. So he's, you know, um, you know, got one section to pass to finish his unlimited license, which will really kind of be his ticket. That, oh, yeah, that is a ticket. You know, yeah. but then you still have to have work. And he doesn't have all that debt. And he doesn't have all that debt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so, so you, you know, we, we've gone in so many different directions here. I'm struggling to come back kind of the point. But the point being is we've got to, we, we need to seek those leaders and, and it's not too late to change. The point that I'm bringing up is, yes, this is concerning. Yes, this is heartbreaking when you look at it. And if your eyes aren't open, one of the things that I, that I, I will tell you clearly, it may not be this month. It may not be in the next two to three months. But if we don't change the direct direction, every single person in our country is metaphorically speaking going to get hit in the mouth with a baseball bat mm -hmm. because you can paper over things, right? Like. Like you get in a little bit of financial trouble, you can buy time by barring yourself into oblivion. Mm -hmm. But um, who was it? Mark Twain? Is it Mark Twain that said, you know, how do you go bankrupt? I may be butchering this. I'm second guessing myself, but I'm okay. pretty sure it was Mark Twain. <coughs> how do you go bankrupt? Slowly and then all at once, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like. So when you look at the fiscal stimulus in our country right now, you know, somebody's saying that's as much as 10% of our GDP <laughs> was fiscal stimulus. And, and we've gone from, you know, we talked about it last month for over $34 trillion in debt. I mean, I'm, I'm out there and a major thinker, Peter Bogosian was given a, a talk and I was shocked because he's a philosopher. And, and he's like, you know, I'm worried because I don't even know that we can pay back 34 trillion. You've got really brilliant people that are talking about that. So, but, but the thing is, is this is a time to make a difference in the lives of our children mm -hmm. and our grandchildren. This is a time to where we can change from our ways, you know, get on our knees and seek the Lord and say, God, what what can I do? You know, yep. light the path before my feet. Um, and it seems overwhelming because, you know, you know, it seems so ingrained in the system. I have this overwhelming, how can I make a difference? You know, but, you know, Jordan Peterson goes through biblically when, I wish I could remember this completely, you know, there's the debate about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. If I just find a few people, if I find a few people, you know, he's like, you would not believe on a local community what five people can do by sacrificing a little bit of their time to be kind and wise and get out and build relationships with those that you disagree with. Have honest discourse and treat people with respect and kindness and influence the path that we're on, right? You know, we were at the... J just Boy, the you could never get r run for Congress because you're too honest, you're brutally good. And Congress would slaughter you because they would want you to give up your life standards and they would want you to be a dirty dog. That's sad because you yeah. are the perfect man to be a politician. Oh, no. no oh, but no, you can't be no. because you can't be corrupt. No. no and that's I, I sad. Wouldn't. I'm sitting here while you're talking. I'm not great at math, but I've done the math in my head and I'm going to give you an example. And you're a financial guy. 
if you were worth $900,000 and then you got a job and you made $400,000, $435,000 for four years, and then all of a sudden you became worth $27 million, where do you think that money came from? <laughs> Can you do that math? Oh, yeah. And you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. No, I mean, no, you no, take... no, 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 no. But if, if you, Paul Kiker, you would be accountable to the government, the IRS, the tax auditors, whoever, you'd be accountable. If you were worth 900000 and you got a job and we saw your paychecks and you made 435 yeah. a year for eight years. You can't make, you can't turn that into $27 million. No. I don't care who you are. Not even you, as good of an investor as you are. No, I mean, that, no, I mean, I So you, if you men can't. like you aren't safe running for Congress, what are we going to do? Well, you know, and here's the problem. Like, like, why would anybody, here's the thing. Want to do this? Why would anybody, like, I, I, I love the clients that I serve. I love what I do. Now, don't get me wrong. There was a period of time where, where I was like, God, please let me do anything but this. Like, yeah. I don't want to do this. Yeah. You know, and it's go, you go from, I'd go from getting ridiculous job offers by clients to, to, you know, come and work for them and run a part of the organization. I'm like, no, nah, I enjoy what I do. Like, hey, please let me have that job. <laughs> yes, and they're yes, like, yeah. they're like, no. And, you know, we never lost clients' money, but we, we just, just, I it went through that. It wasn't fun for a while, was I went it? through that awakening yeah. of like, what in the heck is, has happened to the markets, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you have to adapt to it. But why would I walk away from that? Why would I take the risk to walk away from that? Because, you know, I feel like I have a role to play, and I do, to help clients navigate this wisely, okay? Because, and we specialize with ret retirees, and how you invest to get into, to, to be successful to get into retirement, once you enter the distribution phase, can destroy you uh, your level of success, especially if you have these big market declines, you know, so there, it's a completely different strategy and there's just not that many people that are specialized in that area. So I feel like I have a role to play, but if I did, um, you know, I would have a requirement. One, every bit of my finances would be uh, fully on display mm -hmm. for at least five trusted individuals. I wouldn't want dis to uh, disclose it out, but even one of my enemies I would have on there, yeah. right? Because yeah. that's a check and balance. Yeah. But what I would really love to see is, is, is just wise, simple applications into, okay, so if you're the head of the FDA, you can't go work, you or any of your family can't go work for a pharmaceutical company uh, or, a, or another healthcare company for at least 15 years, mm -hmm. okay? If, if you're the head. Now, and people look, are leaving Congress and going to jobs. It's a revolving where, door. Yeah. So you, you go from you know, yeah. Goldman Sachs to the Treasury Secretary. Mm -hmm. Or you, or, or vice versa, right? So, I mean, you know, and what was it with the lady Carrie Lake? You know, they, mm -hmm. you know, she gets a phone call. Okay, that, it's one of the things I've been praying for years is God, please lay them bare before the American people. Okay, yeah. now, now first off, that's a really dangerous prayer mm -hmm. because if I'm like, Lord, lay them bare before the American people, You're buddy, included. <laughs> your house better be in order because any time I have ever prayed a prayer like that for somebody. You know, it's like, Lord, let them have it. I'm, I get what I had prayed for them yeah, to have, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that, that was like, I, I sat down and prayed, and I was like, I don't think I'm going to pray that for about a month. i got to examine my own situation yeah. first. So, but the point being is, lay it bare, right? Lay it bare. Um, you, can't, you can't have insider trading. Right. Right? You, you have a blind trust or whatever it is. But on the same side, here's one of the things I think would be great to reduce the risk. All right, let's put term limits in. Okay? I agree with that. But I want to know how many years you would say because I, I, have, I have a vision for what it would take. What do you think term limits should be? You know, I don't know what I've thought about term limits, but I would say 12 years at maximum. Okay. Uh, 8 to 12 is what I was anticipating. Okay, I say 16 and I'm going to give you my reasoning. Okay. My dear friend David Ralston, uh -huh. who I adored, and, That's a and good point. I actually was looking at Cherie standing in front of his casket last night and just thinking how much I miss that big bear. I say 16 years because the first four years, you can't even find the bathroom in Congress. You're looking down the yeah. halls.
whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high-quality, holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> my grown-up, grown-up, is there in every way? Care and take care of you. You're my grown-up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown-up, and you know I care. Because it's you and me and me and you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you. in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. can't find a thing you have no power you are just there to run your mouth the next four years you begin to know who to trust and who to respect the next four years you lay your groundwork for what you can accomplish but it takes you four more years to accomplish it all right so that's well considered so you've changed my mind you've changed i really my mind. think because because i think that first four years you are a peon you are just a peon you yeah. are nothing and and you just go there and you get your check. What do they make? One hundred sixty-five thousand a year. Yeah, like I that. have no clue. I think that's right. One hundred seventy-five. I, I thought it was over two hundred. Well, it may be. Of course, they yeah. got a raise, and we did, and of course they did. But but I think sixteen years. Sixteen years is plenty long enough for anybody. A normal retirement's thirty years. Yeah. So they're not going in there for a normal retirement. Like if you work for a GM or whoever, thirty years that's you're right. going to retire. But I say 16 years in, in the political arena, and that's that four years, you figure out where the bathrooms are, whether it's the girls or boys, or you figure out where the cafeteria is. The next four years, you know, you just have to, and, and you have to learn how to trust the second four years, because the first four yeah. years, you just sit back and watch. The second to, four years, you better figure out how to trust. That's well considered, so I would be good with 16 years. But here's a controversial idea that I would share. What business owner is going to walk away I know. to go in there and get nothing done? Right. Okay. Exactly. And I know there's going to be people that would game this system. But let's say you, you got run and you get elected. Okay. You get, tw if, you, if you survive that first four years, you get 25% of what your salary would be mm -hmm. with a guaranteed pension in retirement for life. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Okay, if you make it eight years, you get 50%. If you make it 12 years, you get 75. If you make it 16 years, then you get 100, mm -hmm. okay? And you're forced out. So what that does is takes a business owner that says, hi, I got a good business, I need, I, I, but I, I, I can't stand what is, is what we're getting ready to leave right. our children and grandchildren, right? So what we've destroyed. What for we've our destroyed. So it reduces the risk for those business owners to kind of walk away, right? Because quite frankly, if I ran for for office, um, you, you know, theoretically speaking, forty percent of your clients are going to leave you just because. Oh my gosh, they're the opposite side of me. I'm gone. Right. Right. Um, and then you're not going to be there on that business. But you know, I've thought about it a lot. But from my point of view, I would rather have conversations like this and connect with people and try to encourage them to to go. Now, if there is absolutely nobody else to go, there may come a day in the future where I'm not until I get my clients through what I think is the economic turmoil mm -hmm. coming within mm -hmm. the next five to six years. But if I get people through that on the other side, then I would seriously consider it. Yeah. And my wife will kill me if she hears that. <laughs> so, I can't wait. I but, can't but wait. But no, I mean, the thing is, is my only objective would be to to, if you can, and I don't even know that you can because there's so much of a vested interest, right? But let's put these checks and balances in place. Let's put full disclosure uh, out there. Let's, let's get the, the influential, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a, there's a place for lobbying. We have mm -hmm. to communicate. But going back, but, but let's do it in the right way. So going right. back to the m local, uh, uh, somebody asked me to go to the town hall about the recreational center, mm -hmm. and I'm 100% for the recreational center. Uh -huh. I'm also 100% for that I want to see the plans, and I want to know the budget, right? And we didn't see all that, so I, I understand both sides of that. But everybody agreed that we needed it. Mm -hmm. And then we had one person get up there and just absolutely gaslight the entire place. Like it was calm, it was fine, and then there was a bunch of attacks that were laid out. That's not how we change things, no. right? Mm -hmm. um, and the recreation center would serve the children, which are right. my great concern, is we're leaving this world in one mail of a hiss for our kids. Right. And, right. And, and the kids, if they don't matter, then the world's gonna fall apart anyway, because if we don't do better with them than we've done in the past, they need something to occupy their minds, their yeah. bodies, their spirit, they need it. Yeah. So, I mean, so we who would go it. against that? Well, I mean, um, to, to give the benefit of the doubt, I think they're going against it because of fiscal irresponsibility. Okay. You know, the concern about how it's much. It's got to be paid how, for. How much money was spent on the courthouse and how mm -hmm. far that went over budget, but right. that's a completely different group of individuals, yeah. right? So, but the one thing that I can say is if, you know. That would this be near where the new pool is? You know, I have, that, that's one of the things I have a question for. Like, I yeah. have no clue. Like, I'm in my daily world yeah. and I get a phone call. It's like, hey, yeah. you want to be there? You know, and I, I was sitting there calm and somebody's like, you're going to go say anything? I was like, no, I really don't have anything to say. I mean, everybody said a lot of wise things, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden there was this, you know, a, attack and calling all kinds of people, all kinds of things. And I was, I was like, well, I sure can't say anything now because I'm, I'm not even calm enough in my mind to say anything. Yeah. But you know, that's what doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Let's right. have discord. Let's treat each other with respect. Let's, it gets a lot of attention. And let's get, solve the problem. And you don't solve the problem by screaming and cussing and raising cane. Right. You solve the problem by looking at everything. Right. Right. You look at it all. And, and, I, and I was proud of a lot of the individuals that are in there. There was, there was some restraint. Charlie did a good job of, you know, kind of keeping people uh, in line. But, you know. You know, but he's not running again. And that worries me because he's a good guy. Didn't know that. But he says he's not going to run again. Okay. Or that's what he told me. I hope he changes his mind. But he said he that this was his last. He's, he's ready for retirement. So. Well, and that's okay. And I get so, it, right? Yeah. I mean, there's just a lot of contention out there. But what that tells us is we need to find a good man or woman to take his place that can be respectful and have conversations with both sides. I think that's what Charlie's done a good job mm -hmm. with, and and communicate clearly. To guide us in in the right direction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yep. And um, so, and and there's people out there that there is there are people in our community that will make that that really want to make a difference. But we also need to, um, you know, we just need to encourage that to make a sacrifice now because one of the things the FLCCC was talking about is yes, you can make changes on a national level, okay, but it starts at home. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it starts at home and you build a foundation here and then it moves its way up. And, you know, and I want to get back to that. I really wish we could get back to the point that our detractors, 
right, are, can help make us better, okay? I really enjoy hearing opposite uh, points of view of mine. I get and tickled. I just get tickled. Just look at them and go, what? <laughs> huh? Well, really? You really think that? Okay. You know, but but also I'm like, okay, so so help me understand, and you, you know, and that's one of the things Peter Pergosian talked about is how to have impossible conversations, and I disagree with him on a lot because he's an atheist, but 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 that doesn't mean that God hasn't granted him some wisdom yet. He mm -hmm. just doesn't have enough wisdom to recognize that there's God. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, he's just talking about impossible conversations. Really, listen to the other side, right? and listen to what they have to say, and you don't have to agree with everything that they say, and, and then you can explain your side. But if it gets into this heated exchange and screaming and yelling, there's no respect, well, you're just completely wasting your time move on to somebody else, right? right? right. You're not gonna change everybody's mind. I mean, what, what was the study that they had with the, the um, uh, Publishers Clearing House, you know? I think, you know, years ago, uh, I had a, very wise individual was telling me, he says, now son, I want to tell you one thing in business, you're not going to keep everybody happy. Mm -hmm. And he used this Publishers Clearinghouse study that said, you know, like of 100% of the people that had won, mm -hmm. right, and there were some examples, like they show up at their front door with a million dollar check and they get cussed out because I was about to finish my, you know, show and mm -hmm. I'll come talk to you when it's over, you mm -hmm. know, or how dare you bother me. It's not the oh fact that gosh. you won a million dollars, it's gosh. just, that's just the Crazy. way, that's just the way some people are, Crazy. right? We got to accept that. Crazy. But, um, but here's the thing, I was losing hope before I went to the FLCCC. Brilliant people, head of, the, the head of medical departments, and, and they're humbly there. It's like, you know, I'm here to learn, I'm here to challenge my thought process, and I've observed enough things that I believe that their corruption has captured the system, and I just want to save lives, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. and to see that many people and that many people sharing their stories and, and trying to work, roll up their sleeves and change the world that we live in at the peak of their careers, mm -hmm. right? They could cruise right on in and go play golf every Friday afternoon, you know, every Friday afternoon. And there's nothing wrong with playing golf, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm just kind of painting the picture. They could cruise through and take, you know, vacations year round and, you know, it's somebody else's problem that the the state of the world that or state of the medicine that we're going to be leaving out there yep but when you look at the statistics you know and and there's a lot of them's like hey i am you know one thing that robert f kennedy's doing is questioning the vaccine narrative mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. he is not and it's like one of the docs said look everybody's trying to paint me as an anti-vaxxer i'm not an anti-vaxxer there are a lot of vaccines that make sense mm -hmm. But there's, there one are, that doesn't. there's also a lot of vaccines, not talking about that one, that just don't make sense. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at the, the side effects and the long-term studies that we're seeing, they just aren't worth the effort. But it's a Do you have a smallpox thing on your arm? No, uh, Did uh, they no give that, that was up? before me. Okay. I was born in 74. Okay. Were there so. questions about that? Because the other day somebody was talking about tattoos, and they said, oh, I have a tattoo. I have a smallpox. <laughs> <laughs> That's as close as I'll no, ever nobody, get to a tattoo. Nobody raised that at all. Okay. Uh, and why question. did they stop doing the smallpox vaccines? I have no clue. And we used to get the polio, uh, MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella. That's what the children mm -hmm. got. And then I had the smallpox because I'm of that age and I don't know if it was something that was going on in the world. I have no idea why mm -hmm. I had that. But um, things change and you want to protect. But also when we've had stuff crammed down our throat that we find wasn't true, mm -hmm. then we question. Mm -hmm. And I happened to run around with a large group of people and none of us had any of that mm -hmm. because we chose not to. Mm -hmm. And we chose to change doctors if we had to. We chose to argue with our doctors mm -hmm. often. Um, we chose a different path. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a choice. Mm -hmm. We do have a choice. And I'm thankful that in America we do still have a choice. If we mm -hmm. keep messing around, they're going to take our choice from us. That's right. And that scares me. It That's scares right. me a lot because um, I know a lot of moms who don't vaccinate their children. That's their choice. And, and last night, and I don't know, do you know who Pink is? Pink. Pink, the entertainer. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Pete made a statement, I like and I, I don't usually, I don't usually go this route, but I did last night. She made a statement that anybody who was pro-life 
could stop a really, really bad word listening to her music. And I replied to that. And I don't normally do that. Oh, just stop. Okay. But I replied to her. And I sent a picture of two children that I love dearly. And I said, you know, if we felt the way you did, then I wouldn't have this happiness in my life. Mm -hmm. Because they were not conceived at a perfect time. They were not conceived in a perfect situation. And they are the joys of my life. And you're going to tell me that it would just have been easy to clip and snip and go away. And I kind of blew up. Yeah. Because I'm like, don't, don't tell me. And because, number one, my granddaughter loves pink, loves that she used to be a drug addict, and now she's not, and da-da-da-da-da. But for her to say that if you are pro-life, I don't want you listening to my music. And I'm like, are you crazy? Well, you know what? Crazy. I'll never listen to her music yeah, again. Yeah, crazy. At some point, it's crazy. you have to hit their pocketbook. And maybe yeah. I don't make a difference, yeah. right? Yeah, Maybe I don't make a but difference. But that just offended me tremendously because I'm like looking at these two babies that I have mm -hmm. that wasn't a perfect situation. Life wasn't perfect, but the choice was life. The choice was life. It was. And for her to make that statement, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. wow. How, how crazy is that? But... We've got to, right now, we'll go show some pictures because <laughs> I want to show my Tori is going to have a birthday. I cannot believe that this young woman is in her upper 30s now. So happy, happy birthday to beautiful, beautiful Tori tomorrow. She was, I can remember standing in the hall at Pickens General Hospital when she was born and I was looking through the window as they pull her out, and I'm going, is it a girl? Is it a boy? What is it? And it was a girl, and it is our precious, precious Victoria. She is the generation that um, she could make a difference, but there aren't enough of hers around to make a difference. She is very kind. She is very good. She is very thoughtful. Often she and I don't think alike on certain things, and um, I thank God every day that she was not that statistic that how many children have been aborted and I thank God for her because she is she is an amazing um, part of her mother, part of her father. She has her daddy's get up and go and her daddy's, uh, she's a little bit tough, she's a little bit tough. She is very structured like her daddy and I thank God for him every single day. He is the best dad in the world, and they have a great relationship. And after the loss of her mom, I'm so thankful, so thankful. So happy, happy birthday, Victoria. She loves living the good life. She loves going to Alaska. And this, I want to remind you all, the plant sale, this is seven years we've been doing this plant sale, May the 11th in downtown Ball Ground at the Botanical Garden. Come and have a good, good time and buy plants. We're going to have all kinds of plants there, and there are all kinds of plants. There'll be plants and food and uh, just a good, good time, local vendors, and there'll be food and drinks, and there might even be some peach cobblers show up that day. But it's going to be a fun day, and if you are available on the 14th of Valentine's Day, call me if you would like to come and be in the studio with us because we're going to have a mini concert. Linda Autry and her daughter and son-in-law are going to be here, and they're going to do a really cool mini concert here in the studio. And I would love for you to be a part of that. And um, it is very unusual that um, these, these people, some families get all the talent. And the, the Autry family probably got all the talent. And happy, happy birthday to Miss Martha, who just turned 90 years old. She looks about 67, but she's 90. And she's still working every single day. The lady is working at 90. What work ethics? Amazing, amazing, amazing. She is one awesome lady. And I hope that uh, you, if you see her out and about, you might see her at Mike's Restaurant. This, y'all, please, please, please become a part of this. Nicholas DeLuca has battled cancer since he was two years old. He is now in the true battle for his life. Please be a part of this. They are trying everything. This child is going through everything in the world to try to live. And please come. The DeLuca family has been in Canton for many, many years. His granddad, Ray, is one of my best friends. He has been there 
doing the um, amazing car shows. He's the disc jockey at all the car shows in Canton and the DeLuca family. They owned r and Hoagie Shop for many, many years. They are helping to keep Nicholas on all the different medicines and the treatments. They are trying to save this young man's life. He is an amazing, amazing kid. So please be there at the car show. And this, this is heartbreaking to me because many, many days I went in there and signed a contract to buy a Lawson Chevrolet. For 44 years, drove those Lawson Chevrolets, and now the building is gone and Publix is coming, and it's heartbreaking to me. I'm so glad that progress is coming, but it is so sad to see the last of the Lawson building is gone today. It's just dirt. Mm -hmm. And Anthony and North Georgia Graydon are going to do a great job and get the site ready for Publix and Chick-fil-A and all the other things that are coming into Jasper. Jasper is coming of age. Jasper is coming of age. So... It's going to be very, very different, and um, it, it is so strange oh, wow. to look over there and see that. Now, look at this, y'all. Look at this child. What if the choice had not been life? What if the choice had not been life? Look at that little girl. She is the joy. <laughs> she is so much fun. She loves to eat. She loves <laughs> veggies. She loves fruit. And man, does she love the Waffle House <laughs> and lemons. <laughs> she loves lemons. So I love she, lemons. Is, she is so sweet. But thank God her mother chose life. And uh, I'm so, so thankful for that. And this happy, happy birthday. Connie, I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And happy, happy birthday from your sweet sister. There you go. There you go. Happy birthday. Yay. You know what? We are looking, um, just watching what's going on in the world scares me. Over a million people have illegally crossed the border since October. Yeah. 170 known gang members have been arrested crossing the border. Gang members. But that, that, that doesn't scare me because they've been arrested. What scares me is out of the million that have crossed, many are Chinese nationalists. They're not coming here because they like us. They're coming mm -hmm. here because they want to get into our secrets. <laughs> and they're coming in at the Tijuana border because they're flying from China there, getting off the plane, and then crossing into the U.S. That's illegal. Did you know that? Yeah. It's all illegal. It's not legal. It would be like if you called the sheriff and said, Stacy, I know you saw me running 115 down 515, but heck, it was 7 o'clock in the morning, there wasn't much traffic, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like turn your head and let me do it. That's not right. That's yep. not right. And we have turned our head, and since October, the current administration has let a million people of all nationalities, and, and if you look at them, you'll see... I employed a lot of wonderful folks who came from Mexico. One of them's dad was a doctor, and the economy down there is so that they didn't do well and, and things were horrible, and they came here. He actually swam the Rio Grande to be here. He worked for me a long time. He risked not coming back to the U.S. because his father passed, and he went home to his father's funeral, and he could never get back in the U.S., so he's still in Mexico today. But the nine years they were here in the U.S., they worked for me. Talk about good work ethics. Yeah. They were always on time. They always family did their oriented. job. Family oriented. Honest. Honest. And, and, and I would, you know, I actually paid for them plane tickets out of Dallas to get them back here once because I desperately needed them to work because I couldn't hire anybody who had the work ethics they had. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a shame, isn't it? But we are in, we're in a mess. We're in a mess, and and because I'm an old lady now, when I go places, I look around behind me because somebody's going to kill you, stab you. I don't wear the jewelry I used mm -hmm. to wear. I used to wear a lot of different rings. I used to wear different stuff. I don't do that anymore. I don't want somebody to kill me over my jewelry. Mm -hmm. I wear my cross, and I hope that that will keep them off of me. But But we are in a mess because we turned our head and said, well, we don't like that big mouth New Yorker, so we're going to vote for this guy. Well, dadgummit, dadgummit, you know. Forget that you didn't like that big mouth New Yorker. You better get your act together because we're in trouble. A million people. Do you know in New York today, 
if I looked Hispanic or I could speak Spanish or I could say I just crossed into here illegally, I could be staying at the Hilton in New York on a yeah. card and I could be eating really, really good today. You could be staying in a school system where they kick the kids out so exactly. you have a place to sleep. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so you and I are struggling to make ends meet and to, to make sure that you take care of your clients and we're worried a little bit about the interest and the things we're worried about. But in reality, it's because, I'm gonna get in trouble, I don't care. Uncle Joe, Brandon, gave away my country and he continues to every single day. If you're giving out, I think they told how many million dollars a day they're giving in New York million dollars a day and the mayor of New York stood there last night talking about that all of his cabinet is of one yeah I think they're they're trying to cross a budget 53 million dollars they're wanting to give a day so a day a day a day a day a day so let me take so so Chris Martinson that I've gotten to know with you know through peak prosperity him and Brett Weinstein went down and joined Michael Vaughn in Panama to see for themselves what. Now, Tucker Carlson interviewed Brett Weinstein. You've got to listen to that interview. Love Tucker. Love yeah. Tucker. Love Tucker. You know, Tucker. he's over, you know, they're raising cane. That's a whole. Love we Tucker. We only got a few yeah. time. We'll go yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but he, you know, he said it really is an invasion. Mm -hmm. and, and there's two sides to this. So he, here's the thing that concerns me the most, okay? You, you got to look at the border like your home, okay? So if you're for just a, absolute open border okay then never lock your house and leave your purse in your and car put a sign out front that says anybody who wants to come in here can sit down at my front table sleep in the same room as my kids and grandkids that's basically what you're doing you have mm -hmm. to look at it on a personal level mm -hmm. but you know the the talk that we're having right now okay when people who are trying to get in here go through the legal process that are punished and then you come in through an illegal process, which you're is rewarded. open to anybody, mm -hmm. and you're rewarded, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna give you voting ability. While our veterans are sleeping on the streets. Right. So While our veterans are sleeping on the so, streets. And you know that, that this administration's encouraging it, giving them handouts, who are they gonna vote for, right? So if- They're hoping if, they'll if vote you for get, him. If you get, well, of course they're going to. So you get two million extra votes, that's enough to swing the election, and a Republican will never be elected again. And especially when they're shipping them, uh, th there's there's discussion and a little bit of evidence that they're shipping the, shipping them to certain areas sure. to change the demographics of the voting sure. in that area. Yep. Right. And this is something that that we should all be frustrated about, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you've got military age men that are coming across the border, and we see what happened with Hamas and uh, Hamas and uh, Israel with the kite attacks that started this war that's taking place in the Middle East with Israel. You can't say that can't happen in the United mm -hmm. States, right? Yep, yep. So, um, I, 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 it, with the debt that's taking place and the fiscal stimulus, like, yeah, the fiscal stimulus is keep, keeping the economy strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it it's, is. It's it's fabricated. It's not real. It's not what we did. It's not our investment. It's 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 your money being thrown to people who didn't make it, didn't earn it, don't deserve it. Well, I mean, yeah, that too, but there's also people that are working that are benefiting from the fiscal stimulus that's out there. I mean, well, it's, it's real. It's real, But that is, but yeah. It's, but it's borrowed money. But we've we're, given away and given away and given yeah, away. Yeah, we're borrowing, and then you get this deal, you know, it's like, well, we want one and a half million of people to come over. So, okay, well, we'll think about this another way, okay? So, none of it makes sense to me. One, it can change the political landscape forever. You, you, you should not be given the rights to vote unless you've gone through a whole citizenship program. You right. understand right. the Constitution for what it is. The people who worked for me took 10 years to get them to where they could legally become legal Americans. Yeah. 10 and years. It, and if you go back to our founding fathers, they gave up everything to risk this new venture. Mm -hmm. And all of the checks and balances that they put in place were to protect against the tyranny that they were living under at the time right, that they fled. I mean, when the pain of changing becomes easier than the pain of staying the same, a drug addict or an alcoholic will change, mm -hmm. or an adulterer, whoever, when the pain of changing becomes easier. So the pain of changing and the pain that they endured, the risk that they undertook was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But they also put in a foundation to keep. So those coming through, before you can vote, you have to understand that, okay? The other side of that is this, right? 
wages. Okay, so let's say it's trying to keep inflation down for short-term gain. Okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. This is strictly not about votes. It's about keeping, uh, you know, employers to keep wages down. Well, if we keep wages down, how in the world is anybody going to afford a house at the price levels that they're at right now? So neither of these are honest and clear policies for the American people. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, you know, those are the two most reasonable um, explanations that I've heard, and neither one of them are good for the American people. Mm -hmm. I had a four-hour meeting yesterday about building houses. Building houses that first-time buyers can afford. Well, 329 to 339 was affordable until the interest rate happened. Right. And I had so many people pre-qualified for a 339 to a 349 house that was a nice, livable, nice house. But then the interest changed and their payments went from $1,700 a month to $2,500 a month. That changes everything. That changes the whole game. So now you have to make them settle for less mm -hmm. and sell them a house that doesn't have this, doesn't have this, doesn't have this. Well, bull crap. That is not right. They need to make the interest go back down and put the interest down where you can sell them a 339 house because for 339 even with building materials, what they are, you can sell them a nice home mm -hmm. at four and a quarter percent interest. If you can get it back down to four and a quarter, they can afford it. But if you go over that, they can't afford it. And so we have people who are paying rent, $2,100 a month rent for a three bedroom, uh -huh. three and a half bath, $2,100 a month. It is ridiculous. And you're having to have families move in together. You're having to have people um, roommate situation where if two roommates move out, then one person is stuck with this rent until he gets two more roommates. So it is, um, we're in trouble. We're well, in trouble. like you said, we're in trouble too. It's time to go. If, if, if I was in Congress or the Senate, I'd be the laughing stock of the of the individuals that are up there that have so much corruption. Because first thing I do is say institutional money uh -huh. has no business buying homes. Right. Okay. Finance it, do whatever you want, but BlackRock doesn't need to be coming in and buying whole neighborhoods. Exactly. Okay, get exactly. that out because that's institutional money fighting against our, our youngers. The our second, home second buyers, thing I would yeah. do is foreign nationals have to go through a ridiculous uh, uh, approval process to buy land or homes, mm -hmm. right? Because we've got to protect it for the American people first. And the ridiculous p policy decisions we're making is going to destroy the dollar as the medium of exchange on the long term. I just don't know when it's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But there's going to come a point where their foreign investors are going to say, I don't want to hold these U.S. dollars, but I'll go buy real estate inside the United States, which could further uh, price out, right. um, you know, our, our children and our future. I mean, the American dream is buy a home and think about the appreciation of that asset over the past right. 30 years, it's been great, and I think you have 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, we gotta go. <laughs> and our commercial ran before we came on the air, and you got to see our commercial then, and we'll do it again later. But, y'all, this is real. This is real. This is our America. Think about what you're doing. Think yeah. about who you're putting in office. Think about it. Think. I'll yeah. see you again soon. I love you, See buddy. you soon. <laughs> love you. <laughs>